Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman in the Automatic Transmission Lab at Pittsburgh State University and we have another compressor, AC compressor lesson. Today we are talking about the, um, the, the clutch assembly and specifically the, um, the coil of the clutch. And so I've been calling this all types of different names <laughs> throughout these uh, videos, but uh, technically it's the coil and I don't know what I've been calling it. I typically say this is the clutch and then I'll say this is the clutch and this is the clutch and you know and really it's it's the, it's the clutch assembly and so you have to realize that the, the clutch assembly has um, the hub you know that's the piece that's connected to the input shaft and then you have the um, the bearing and the pulley that's connected to the belt to the engine to, to make it rotate but the um, the uh, of course this this clutch is is, is electronically controlled it's a, it's a electro magnetic clutch and in order to get the, the engine connected to the input shaft of the compressor you need to connect these two pieces together and you connect these two pieces together through uh, magnetism is what we do. and so 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 basically the coil is what I want to talk about today the coil is nothing more than a, a monster um, coil wire so you know I have one taken apart and so it's a copper wire that's you know wound around you know, thousands of times, um, okay, maybe hundreds of times, I don't know, I haven't counted. But anyway, so it, um, so what this does is that anytime I um, take a coil, like the, like your ignition coil, and if I put uh, 12 volts to it, uh, it creates a, um, it creates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field is going to expand around the pulley and expand around the hub, and it's going to connect together, and it's a strong magnetic field. Have you ever uh, been to a, a door and you try to open it and it has a magnetic lock on it and you can't pull it open no matter how hard you try and when someone releases that magnetic lock you're able to open it so so you know magnets can be very very strong you know, they can pick up a car <laughs> and so um, so um, so that's kind of interesting now um, I people will talk about what well, a lot of hubs sometimes will have uh, slots on it and so this has a few slots I've seen a lot more uh, slots on a hub and so um, Students will ask, well, why are those slots there? And sometimes you'll have slots on the, um, the pulley itself. Is it, to, is it to reduce weight? Is it for cooling? Well, um, by, by putting these, um, these slots in there, what it does is, is that this magnetic field, instead of just expanding like, you know, like a big bubble, you know, this, a big bubble, it's only connected, you know, maybe on one side, the big bubble's coming around to the other side. And by having these, um, these notches in here, the magnetic field kind of is stitched. The magnetic field kind of goes like zigzagging all through those openings and, and stuff of the of the of the hub and the pulley, and it helps create a very very stronger um, um, a connection. And so, so, you know, this thing right here, you know, it doesn't even hold on. And so, if I take 12 volts, I have a jump pack down here, and I have jump pack connected to this guy right here. And so, there's 12 volts here. And so, I'm going to assume. This is the 12 volt side and this is the um, ground side, but when I connect it, and again, it's like nothing happened. Well, you know, there, there's no air gap right now on there, but when I pick this thing up, <laughs> you know, uh, the whole entire thing is gonna be picked up. And I, I've had students say, try to pull that apart and they can't pull it apart. And so, um, so you know, if I release it, I can pull it apart. If I connect it, you know, a very strong magnetic field, the whole entire thing gets picked up. I don't know if I want to, I'm afraid I'm gonna short out my two wires. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna be able to be able to open it um, like that. What I want to show you is that you know this magnetic field, you know, it expands, and then so when I released it, and let's see if you guys can see this here. If I need to turn off the lights or not, I don't know if you can see that or not. You can see a little bit of a spark. I'm going to turn off the lights and see if I can get a better spark off of this. Okay, I turned down the lights to try to get a better spark off this so you can see this. So if I take the ground side and, and release it, and you can see that it's a pretty good spark off of this. And so when I do that, open and close, open and close, open and close, think, it's, think of it as a relay. You know, I'm engaging the clutch, I'm disengaging the clutch. Every time I disconnect it, I have this big arcing, and so so the problem is, is, that, that, is that as this magnetic field expands, you know, it creates a magnetic field, but when it collapses, it induces voltage, very similar to an ignition coil, and that ignition voltage um, is going to continue to flow and it's going to jump the spark, and so you know it could be as much as 300 volts, you know, I mean, and 
So if I do this hundreds, if not thousands of times, pretty soon, you know, I'm taking a little bitty piece of metal away from um, this connection. Kind of like a little bitty weld is what it does. And so it could start deteriorating that connection over hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of cycles. And so, and it doesn't matter if the ground side is the connection or if I do the power, power side, it's the same way. The, the, the induced voltage is gonna go to wherever the open is. And you know, this is exactly what we're doing for a, a coil. You know, that's how a coil fires a spark plug uh, through, the, through the points or uh, the electronic ignition is the exact same way. That we, we energize the coil, and then we, when we release the coil, we induce the voltage, which is gonna cause the spark plug to fire. Well, this coil in this uh, AC clutch is a lot bigger than a individual coil um, uh, and so uh, it produces again up to 300 volts and so the key is, is that AC circuits have some way to control this induced voltage or this voltage spike because if, if it's not controlled it's going to damage whatever the switch is. Now, if it's just a relay uh, you replace your relay no big deal but some some systems have um, uh, a clutch that are not control, controlled by any uh, relay. They have high side drivers in the, um, let's say the powertrain control module that is um, controlling this. And so then we're looking at the, um, the drivers in the PCM that is subject to this voltage spike. So, so what they'll do is that they'll put typically, not always, but that some type of um, zener diode, uh, you know, it could be a rugged diode, but normally it's a zener diode on there. And so, so if I take a look at this compressor right here, what's interesting about it, take these wires where they're not touching each other. I'm assuming my green wire, we're gonna say, is my 12 volt feed and my, my black wire is my ground. And so if, if, when I peeled back the tape, it looks like that I got these two wires connected to each other. And you're like, oh, why in the right mind would you ever have the power and the ground connected to each other? You know, and, and so, well, this is where the zener diode would be. And so, so if for some reason I'm replacing a clutch and I have to cut off the, um, the wires, well, I want to make sure I cut off the wires, let's say if the, if the connector doesn't fit and I have to maybe try to solder in a new connector. I want to make sure I don't want to connect the wires, cut the wires down here, because if I cut the wires down here, I'm cutting out the zener diode. I don't want to do that. I, I want to make sure that I leave the zener diode in the wiring circuit itself. Sometimes the, uh, the zener diode is uh, built into the clutch. Uh, the actual coil itself, sometimes it's in the wiring harness. Uh, this one right here, it is, it is not, <laughs> it is not in the, um, in, the, uh, in the coil because I could tell by just how much of a voltage spike I see just from doing it. Uh, we can get a scope out and we can measure that voltage spike. I've done it before. You know, and it's, it's, it's quite large, you know, it, it could be up as high as hundreds of volts on a good 12 volt battery. So let's take a look at this clutch here then, because this does have a zener diode in it. And so I'm gonna connect, I read my 12 volt positive feed to the green wire. I'm gonna connect the, the ground wire. We'll see if the clutch even kicks on. Woo, wonder if that's a short. Ah, oh, wow, how about that? That wire was shorted. See what just happened? Ah, oh, how about that? I just blew a fuse. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take a, an ohmmeter. And right now we got an ohmmeter. And we are going to ohm out this coil. And so a, the resistance of a clutch coil typically is three to four ohms. And so if we take a look at it, Right now, it looks like it's 0 0.3, 0 0.3 ohms. Wow, something is shorted, how about that? And so the key is, is that, you know, I should have, and so it's a, so you could have the, the, the zener diode, you know, the bidirectional diode in here that is shorted, or it could be that the, um, the, the connector is, uh, or the coil is, uh, is shorted. So let's just see what we got here. I disconnect the, the connector it should go OL and it still says 3M. So I know that, so, the, so, so my, so my bi-directional um, uh, diode is shorted, which is, I mean, it's, it's open and it's shorted. So that's a bad scenario. And I can tell you what happened here in a minute. And that is, and it's shorted, looks like both directions. So it's, yeah, 0.3 ohms. So what happened is that, um, that I had some um, 
some students in here playing with this the other day, and they were um, uh, looking at uh, clutch coil, and what happened is that they um, they took and they reversed the polarity of this, and so instead of putting 12 volts on, on the proper side and the, and, the, and the ground on the other side, they reversed the polarity of that, and if you have a bi-directional zener diode, no big deal, it works both directions. If you just have a, a single diode, uh, and if you reverse polarity of it, sometimes they're sensitive, and they'll show it out just like this. And I remember um, one time, it was actually when the, the brand new uh, 300s came out. We had an AC activity with technicians, and, and where the, the, um, the, the clutch wasn't coming on, it was bugged. And, when, and the clutch on that system, I remember it being very easy to get to. So, so the technicians would disconnect the wire right here, and they would just jump her from 12 volts to ground uh, to, the, um, to the battery just to see if the clutch would kick on, to bypass that system to, to, to see if the clutch was working all right. And because they probably have done that, you know, dozens of times in the shop and not a problem. Well, they did that on, on, um, on that particular vehicle and they put everything back together again. And then all of a sudden they realized that they, they had two problems. They got the AC back working again, but now kept blowing the AC fuse. And the, um, and the, um, and the bi-directional uh, Zeno diode that was built in the clutch was very sensitive and when you reverse polarity did it, it would blow. And so um, this is what happened on this particular one right here. And so, um, so it's a fun one to play around with on that. If I take a look at a regular clutch resistance, let's take a look at this guy right here and see what this is. And again, somewhere around three to four ohms. And so what do we got there? I, 3.6 ohms. So, you know, if I tell the students, you know, if you have 12 volts and you got, you know, three ohms of resistance, you know, you're gonna get around four amps going through the circuit. If you have four ohms of resistance, you're gonna have around three amps going through the circuit, you know? So if you have under three amps of going through the circuit, you know, measured maybe at the relay or maybe at the fuse, you know, that is a, that is concern. So, so the key is, is that you wanna, one of the checks you could do with this is a resistance check to make sure that, uh, that the coil is not shorted, that it's not open. It doesn't have too high resistance because if the resistance is too high, you're going to lower your amperage. It's not going to be able to um, hold the torque of the uh, compressor and it's going to start slipping, starting to cause heat, starting to cause all sorts of problems. And so um, so that's something that's an easy check you could do. You know, if, you, if, the, if the system isn't isn't working, you know, or you're blowing fuses or, the, you know, the clutch isn't kicking on, you jump right at the relay. The clutch still isn't kicking on. Well, you know, it could be that the coil is a problem. You know, could be that that could be that that bidirectional uh, zener diode that's there to control that voltage spike uh, is, uh, is is having a problem. So those are some things that you should look at. Okay, I replaced my uh, fuse and my jumper wires. We use uh, fuse jumper wires around here just for that. So so that was a good example. And I remember. Um, one time I was uh, diagnosing a, a vehicle that doesn't have a clutch on, and I, I jumpered the, um, the AC uh, uh, relay with a paper clip, and, <laughs> and my finger had a permanent burn mark on it for like years because the, the paper, clip, paper clip got so hot that it like disintegrated in my fingers. And uh, the, something very similar to this, the, um, the Zener diode was shorted, and it was um, <laughs> because somebody jumpered it, you know, the, uh, they, uh, they, they, uh, they reversed polarity that, and it um, and was shorted and I wasn't expecting it to be shorted. I wasn't expecting it to be a problem. We were diagnosing a problem and um, it burned up pretty good. So, so, so I tell my students this and so mm -hmm. I should follow that suit is that um, we should check before I jumper things. It's kind of a good idea to check to make sure it's not shorted so we don't like start fires. And so I'm going to ohm out this particular clutch right here that we're working on next and what's it 3.4 ohms yeah 3.3 ohms so it's not short you know and um, sometimes it's like hey wonder if that diode in there if there's something in there sometimes I'll reverse the polarity of it just to make sure it's the same which it is okay there we go and so let's take a look at this one here so I got my jumper wires again see if I don't get them to touch each other and that one on that side and put this one on this side without oh there it goes okay so you can hear the clutch kick on and i got a pretty good spike in there i'm looking down the side there and a really good arc you know you can kind of see the arcing on the video you know so you know there's no there's no zero light on that one either 
but I'm going to put this up a little bit closer so you can see this. But the air gap in this thing is um, very wide, so it's not adjusted correctly. I got a a 30 and a almost a 28, so almost 60 thousandths there in that thing. And as I take a look at this clutch, and if I look at it kind of sideways, what I'm looking at it is that <laughs> this side goes down, this side does not. And so, so can you imagine that? And I probably can't do anything with it by hand where it's, it's still gonna spin together, but it's not coming down straight, it's coming down on an angle. And so can you imagine that happening on a car, you know, your clutch clearance isn't correct, and it's um, causing all types of problems. If I turn this sideways a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see it better or not. You can see it's only going on one side. So with clutches, you're going to want to make sure that the um, that the clearance is set up correctly. You know, somewhere around twenty thousandths. You also want to make sure that the um, resistance is around two to four ohms. That if it's uh, too low, you're going to get the circuit uh, shorted out, and it's going to be blowing fuses. And if it's a uh, too high a resistance, it's going to um, cause low amperage and not cause the uh, the, um, the the actual um, clutch to uh, be able to pull and connect the the hub with the pulley. This is Scott Norman, and if you're looking for more automotive educational videos, you could uh, look for my Professor Pentane YouTube channel. That's spelled P-E-N-T-A-N-E. -E. I'm also on Facebook, and you could look for my Professor Pentane website with automotive information on for you. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.